can't tell you how excited I am to be here. This is the home of Cosimo Medici. If you're not familiar with the Medicis, look them up. They're a very important family here in Firenze, Florence. There is a TV series. It's not 100% accurate, but it'll give you a great idea of who they are. So look it up. I think it's on Netflix. Now let's uh, go check out this place. This was the entry hall where they would come in with their carriages and their horses and just look at this place. It's just mind-blowing to be here. impact of being in this it's a small city but it actually somebody's home medici's home the bedroom was intimidating to me because it was so big and the bed in it was a huge bed but it was still minuscule i can't imagine sleeping there the fact that cosimo piero and lorenzo all lived here once the history the popes the artists the things they did for the city. It's just amazing and mind-blowing and fascinating and I'm so thrilled to have been here. So in front of us is our apartment, the very first apartment we ever stayed in in Italy in 2012. And behind us is the Church of San Lorenzo. That's right. The bells of San Lorenzo. We have which go off all the time <laughs> not fabulous. just on the top of the hour or the quarter or the half or the three quarters but all the freaking time i love it but cosimo himself cosimo medici is buried in this building right here so when you come i highly recommend you go there and then behind us a little further you'll see a big dome see that one back there and that's where the rest of the medici are buried including lorenzo the great we love Italy. And today we're off to see Palazzo Vecchio, yeah. which was their second home, which they ended up leaving and going to Boboli Palace because it was too small. <laughs> Anything Medici, I'm in. And I am too. It's just uh, amazing what this family did to build up Florence. We are inside Santa Maria di Fiore. Yes, and if you can hear from the echo and the voices, this place is cavernous. It is just fascinating to see and be a part of here. There's so much history here. The church was built in 1296, mm -hmm. wasn't finished until 1436, so 130 about 130 years. Right, and the floor alone took the same amount of time to put together all of this marble. It's amazing. And the place is so big, they actually had jousting matches in here. <laughs> Hard to believe. You know, this was the Church of the Medici. This is the church that Cosimo said, we can build this dome. And in comes Brunelleschi, who figured it out with the double layer of the dome. And Brunelleschi is actually buried here in the church. And this is where the Patsy tried to assassinate the Medici. And they did kill Giuliano, but Lorenzo survived. And Lorenzo, instead of fighting, he said, we all need to get along. And the people rallied behind him. Unfortunately, the Patsy were still the Patsy, and they ended up being exiled and assassinated. And that was the end of the Patsies, and Lorenzo became Lorenzo the Great.
lot of talk about the uh, number of tourists in Europe after COVID, and especially these days in Barcelona, they're throwing water on the tourists. The locals are so upset. But we notice a discernible difference, an increase. And here we are in... It's almost November. November. It's insane. Well, here's a little B-roll to show you what we're talking about. I mean, it is crowded. So the key to the benefit program, any place where there's lots of tourists, yep. is come out early. Come out early. When the sun comes up, go out. When the sun goes down, go out again. Then you'll get some great photos. <laughs> Montevecchio and Florence. And a guitar. All right. Love it. This is Mercado Centrale. This used to be the real market. It is still downstairs early in the morning, but they've turned this into everything food you can imagine. So Bob and I are here for breakfast, and there's a pistachio croissant or cornetto in my future. This is the breakfast choice, and there it is. Grazie. When you come here, you can walk around and look at the food and order. It's really quick. Or you can sit down at a table, scan the QR code, and order. This is the marketplace, which is right across from our apartment. And as you can tell, everything you can imagine is here and on sale for a very good price. You come here to rub the boar's nose and you'll come back to Florence. Or you can drop a coin in and make a wish, but be careful because the gypsies pick up the change that didn't fall in the trap. Beware of gypsies. One of the iconic landmarks here in Florence is right behind us. Ponte Vecchio. Doesn't matter how many times you see it, it's always fascinating, but my favorite's at night. Blue light, less we'll, people. We'll be back. <laughs> my dream is to go and walk through the Vasari corridor. It's been under renovation since 2016 to the tone of 10 million euros. The Vasari corridor connects the Palazzo Vecchio to the Uffizi and then goes down this way here across the Ponte Vecchio. It ends up over at Boboli Gardens or Pitti Palace and it actually goes through one of the churches the Medici used to go to. It was a way for them to get across easily without dealing with the masses of people like there are today. Back in the day, the Ponte Vecchio wasn't filled with gold, it was meat. And it was stinky and dirty and messy and they didn't want to get their robes dirty. So maybe next time it'll be open, fingers crossed. I mean, how often does this happen? Kidding me? I always say you never know who you're going to meet on a cruise ship, but now you never know who you're going to meet in Italy. Say hello, sir. Thank you. It's hard to get lost in Florence because, well, just about everywhere you look, uh, you see something like that. Right back there, I'm going to show some other videos so you can see them better is a statue, a fountain of Neptune. Wow. But what you may or may not know, now look closely, I'm gonna zoom in on the face. When this was built, Cosimo Medici said, yeah, use the physique of Neptune, but now uh, put my face on it. I get it. So let's do it with you, Bob. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure that my uh, nude physique is going to have Kind of... Oh, we'll put your face on. Oh, okay. I was going to say, if I happen to be nude, there no. wouldn't be a crowd around this place. I'll tell you that. There'd be a lot of laughter. 
So over my shoulder, right there, I'll show you another video, is the etching of Michelangelo, done by Michelangelo. Depending on who you ask, some people say, no, that's not really it. He didn't really do that, somebody else did it. But they do say, some people, it could be Michelangelo's own graffiti self-portrait right here on the front of the Palazzo Vecchio. We've shown you the Palazzo Medici Riccardi, and this is where they moved to. After that Palazzo, they moved to this place because it was bigger. So let's look at some of the inside and just imagine what it was like to be the richest family in the world. So this is the inside of Palazzo Vecchio. This is the room of 500. I think it'll hold more like 5,000 people. It's huge. And I would say these ceilings are at least four stories high. And in the background right there, you can see a balcony. That's the second floor, which is at least two floors up. There's 200 stairs to get up and down within the Palazzo, but another 226 to get to the top of the tower.